Well, my view about the uh, energy bills is that it always was a fraudulent argument because it was always an attempt to suggest that it was the extra green costs that were pushing up bills. And, and we know that's not true. We know that the major cost, far the major cost, was the increase in basic prices of, uh, of, of oil and gas. That, that's the reality. And that the actual cost of the real green, green measures is very small indeed. And it's not going to go rising. It's a relatively small amount going ahead. So I, I've always thought that in the end, truth will out. I, you know, there was a period in which the newspapers were able to make this pretense, but, but, it's, but it's over. So I don't see that as being the issue. Um, uh, of course, the green crap phrase itself was a total fraud. I mean, it wasn't uh, true, and it wasn't said by the people it was said to be said. It, particularly, they tried to say it by several people when they found each one of them. <laughs> Not only disowned it, but clearly hadn't said it. The two questions are, first, um, uh, is this replacement from other gas, um, or is it an addition to? Well, I'm not sure you can ever say that, an answer to that very clearly, but if you're talking about um, the strategic defence of our interests uh, in Britain and in Europe, then not to rely on gas coming from uh, countries who are unstable or unfriendly seems to me a perfectly sensible thing to do. Um, and yes, if the demand for gas is reducing all the time because climate change rules are pressing in and you get the right uh, budgets and you get the right uh, carbon um, uh, uh, markets, then it won't be a, um, an addition. It'll be a replacement. So it's the international agreements from, uh, <coughs> from Paris and onwards that will be crucial. And in Britain, it's the carbon budget. And we are making it absolutely clear, and the government has accepted it, that it has to be done within the carbon budget, and the carbon budget won't be expanded because we've got uh, this gas. But frankly, I don't think anybody would understand an argument which said uh, it's all right to have Russian gas, but it isn't all right to have your own gas. I think that's not sensible. But there is a last bit which we are very keen on, which is the time-limited bit, in the sense that we do want uh, to make it clear that this is an interim situation. So people who play, put down infrastructure, which manifestly is based upon the continued use of gas well into the late 30s, uh, really do have to understand that that isn't going to provide a return. No, no, not at all. Uh, it's uh, a real issue, and it's not just the UK, it's uh, throughout the world. Uh, there has been a dangerous dysfunction between adaptation and, uh, and mitigation. Uh, the uh, people for whom climate change is, as it is for me, uh, the most material threat facing mankind, we have tended to be very tough on the mitigation because we can't see how we can achieve these ends without dealing with that. Uh, some of those who are much less convinced and some who are outright deniers um, have kind of been saying that you can do it all through adaptation. So they've almost tried to make a, a, a competitiveness of the, between these two. I think for a future government making sure that DEFRA and DEC work very much more closely and trying to make that work more effectively. Above all, I'm afraid the Treasury is going to have to face up to the real cost of climate change. I mean, people talk about climate change as if it's happening at some future date. It's happening now. And that's why we have to spend more money on flood prevention. That's why we've got to learn about soft flooding uh, arrangements. So that's how we're going to have to re- uh, learn about wash meadows and uh, all sorts of other things which we've, we've lost. Um, and we're going to have to do that because the climate is changing and it is going to result in very many more incidents of particularly uh, difficult weather.
<laughs> I, um, I think that the uh, steps have got to be very clear. First of all, the nations that are really committed, like ourselves, have got to show at home that we're doing it. That's why I think it's very important for us to fix a carbon intensity target for 2030 before we get to um, uh, Paris. China has made a big difference. China's position, intensely nationalist, intensely concerned with its own future, but therefore intensely committed because it knows that climate change is having a huge effect on China. And they don't want it any longer. They really do want to win this battle. But they don't want to do it at a cost which um, does, not does not properly represent the fact that the rich countries have made their money out of that pollution. And therefore, we do have to shoulder a great deal of the, of the cost. Well, it won't be the last deal we do, and it may be better seen as the beginning of a continuous process. It has to be a good enough deal to mean that we can achieve a two-degree world. That's quite a big ask, but it certainly won't encapsulate everything which makes it absolutely certain that that's what we'll do.